after 3,300 years, an important discovery shed light on Moses' ability to write the Torah. In 1905, the great pioneer of archaeology, Sir William Matthew Flinders Petrie, and his wife Hilda went to the Sinai Peninsula searching for evidence of ancient Egyptian activity. Petrie had already found the famous Merneptah Stela near Thebes. At the time, it contained the oldest known reference to the people of Israel. It boasted that they had been subdued by the pharaohs. Just 50 miles northwest of the traditional Mount Sinai, ancient Egypt worked major copper and turquoise mines. One of these sites is known today as Sirabit al Qadim. The Petries began to discover many hieroglyphic inscriptions. Then on the walls of one of the mines, they saw writing that appeared different from the rest. To learn more about Petrie and his discovery, I went to the Petrie Museum at University College, London. Egyptologist Chris Naunton is the former director of the Egypt Exploration Society and the current president of the International Association of Egyptologists. What was unique about Flinders? Petrie has um, a far more uh, rigorous scientific approach to um, the material that he was excavating really than anybody had before. So previously archaeologists had been drawn to um, treasure is probably as good a word, um, objects which were very beautiful, museum quality uh, was a phrase that was, was often used. So those things were prioritised. Uh, and, and more or less everything else, the non-beautiful, non-inscribed, disregarded. Petrie is the first person really to realize that there was a huge amount to be learned from those things. And so he, he is the man to invent techniques for um, gathering that material, documenting it and interpreting it. Let's just talk about inscriptions that he found in the Sinai. Petrie's work in the, in the Sinai is incredibly important. He uncovered uh, a group of inscribed objects, inscribed with a script which um, was unknown elsewhere in Egypt. Um, this is the uh, proto sinaitic script. And of course, textual material which Petrie and others were un uncovering in Egypt was, was abundant, but written in scripts which, which we're, we're very familiar with, this was something very different. Was it Egyptian? And, and not Egyptian. This, this was a new script, um, a new language, something that, that very much sat outside what was well established as something Egyptologists knew about in the Nile Valley. In 1999, more inscriptions were found by Egyptologists John and Deborah Darnell, this time in Egypt, northwest of the ancient city of Thebes at a place called Wadi El Hol. They were in the same style as those found in the Sinai. What date were the inscriptions at the Sinai mines, and how do we know? Both the inscriptions from Serbid al Khadam and those from Wadi al Hol are, in essence, argued to be Middle Kingdom. But one of the reasons we do that is because, for example, at Wadi al Hol, the inscriptions that are closest are actually Middle Kingdom texts, mm -hmm. and the same is true for the Serbian inscriptions. In the search for a pattern of evidence, what I know so far is that the Petries and others discovered a new type of script. It developed during the Middle Kingdom, so it would have existed by the time of the Exodus and should have been available to Moses. And this script was found in the region of Egypt, but was not Egyptian hieroglyphs. It was something very different. These finds match the first two criteria of the investigation. But what about the last two? Could this new writing be a type of alphabet and like Hebrew? This is from ancient Egypt. It's from the Old Kingdom, maybe about 400 years before Abraham lived. It's very old then. It's very old. So what is the connection with uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs and the oldest alphabet? 
Well, this is the very writing script that's the basis of the world's oldest alphabet. They were formed from 22 of these uh, hieroglyphic signs. Are there any of those examples here on this? Yes. In fact, here is a wave of water. When you convert this into a proto-consonantal alphabetical letter in Hebrew, this becomes the M. Because for Hebrews, water is mayim. So they see the wave of water, they're thinking mayim, and they pronounce m. So this is where the alphabet came from. But how did it develop over time? When you look at the family tree for the beginning of the alphabet, it starts with the Proto-Sinaitic script, which when found in Canaan is called Proto-Canaanite. Then, in the standard view, the alphabet is believed to have developed into Phoenician hundreds of years later. In this view, Phoenician branches into other scripts such as Old Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, continuing on to numerous alphabets over the centuries. But was the first alphabet related to Hebrew?